And we are live with episode 112 of the Start, Bill Grow Show. Randy Bro is my friend. What is going on? What is up, Nikki P? What is up, uh, Facebook? What is up, everybody listening on the podcast? Thank you so much for uh, sticking with us. 112 episodes, and we're still going yeah. strong. We're still bringing in awesome guests and awesome content. Uh, Facebook hasn't kicked us off yet, so, man, it's a good day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Life is good, my friend. Life is good. And, you know, speaking of life is good, Randy, we got two guys over here, man. Young studs, optimistic, you know, some of the most optimistic people that I've run to we run into in the space, man. Who are these guys? Who we got here? So let me let me backtrack a little. So, you know, I've been coaching now two, two, three years now, even before that, before I really actually made a platform out of it. And 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 there's there's certain what I've learned through coaching and even my own coaches. I have my own coaches, I've had coaches for a long time, and I've learned that me personally, I'm a pain in the ass to coach. <laughs> because I'm hard headed. I don't listen very well. And, and it's like, I'll get a great idea, but then I want to like finagle it and put my own spin on it and not really listen to all of it. And not like, <laughs> I want to kind of change it and do my own thing. And sometimes you, you come across people that, that take an idea and that actually listen and implement, execute some of the ideas and strategies that you put out there. And, and these guys are the epitome of that. They've just like, to a T like executed every step of the way. And, and they've seen just some, some really awesome, you know, infrastructure growth success, like, and then they're just having a lot of fun on the way. So, man, I got to give it to them they, they execute, they work hard. I get energy just from uh, every time I connect with them, you know, but, uh, but my guys, uh, Jose and Hugo from uh, new era roofing. Welcome guys. Thank Thanks, you, thank man. You. Thanks, man. We're energized, motivated, driven, ready to roll, man. We're ready to take over the world, man. <laughs> I love that attitude, man. Well, so hey, this is where we always kind of start out. We always like to go into this story, right? So story time of, you know, how you guys actually got into space, how you guys got connected. So maybe you guys can kind of start with just sharing your story. Yeah, man. Um, so I guess I want to start off by taking it a little bit back, even way before I started the roofing industry. So I was raised in a very, like, very wealthy family. My dad had his own business. My mom was doing very well for herself. Uh, but they were a very broken family. Um, they were always fighting, right? They slept in different rooms since the day I was raised. So um, my dad actually suffered from alcoholism and he had diabetes. So when I, right around when I was about 13 years old, no, actually 12, 13, seventh grade, uh, sadly, he passed away on me. And due to that. So we had to actually get a smaller place to live in. And uh, that's where we kind of started from. One of the things that I didn't want to see my mom do is suffer and suffer from, you know, kind of paying for me, right? I didn't want to see her struggle with money. So I actually started working at McDonald's at 11 years old, right? And imagine this little baby face, big, big ear boy, right? That's cash <laughs> register ready to take some orders and and you know that's what i was doing kind of all my middle school and and high school years instead of other kids were going you know to play with their friends right after right after school and i was actually getting ready for work one of the things that it taught me though man is it taught me how to manage my money since i was young though when you're little you just want to waste your, all your money on all the materialistic stuff right so i was really attracted to money but all my money was being spent on the weekends um you know and started drinking at a very young age, partying at a very young age. And because my mom had gave me such a big leash, she didn't want me to suffer from, you know, my dad passing away. I never blame her for that, right? So she wanted me to kind of enjoy life. And me, that's how I was enjoying life, working and kind of paying for the weekend. Right after high school, my cousin, cousin introduced me into construction, uh, drywall and framing. I did that for about, I want to say four years, right? When you're in construction, man, you learn very easy that it's amazing money you're getting, right? I'm 18, 19 years old, making $2,000, you know, you know 1500 a week. And to me, that's, that's the most money I've ever made. So, you know, I was really, really happy there. But I was, like I said, just living for the weekend. Though um, I went through my apprenticeship for four years. I got into journeyman level, which is the highest level in construction. And I realized that this just wasn't for me, right? This, I just wasn't happy. I wasn't in a good place. You know, my, I wasn't excited to go to work. So um, luckily my sister's best friend, she was actually an office manager for a roofing company. And she asked me if I, if I were to ever be interested in selling roofs. 
to me, man, roofing was just kind of hitting a nail on the roof. Like I never knew that there was this side to roofing. So she got me into the interview and the guy actually tried, the boss tried to talk me out of it because, you know, I don't know if it was because I was just 21 year old Mexican boy that, you know, he didn't think that I could make it, but he actually tried to scare me away. One of the other owners, he was actually trying to push me and letting me know that, you know, you could do this. So it took me about a month to actually say yes. And um, their way of training was right. Here's, here's your shirts. Here's, here's a couple contracts, go out and make some sales. So it took me a whole month to make my first sale. But man, once I did that first sale, it was my eyes lit up, man. Like this is what I was meant for, right? I actually outsold everybody that first year. And, um, and you know, the rest is history, man. That's where I actually met this guy. He was actually one of the crew leads there. And um, so I want to say I was there about two years, two to three years. And the last year, one of the guys, one of the project managers that was there, he actually got screwed over by one of the owners there. Uh, on, on a huge commercial job, man, just took so much money away from him. And I just didn't believe in that. I didn't believe in what was going on. None of the guys believed in that. So we actually kind of all ventured on our own. And that's how New Era started, man. That's how Thanks the story. Thanks for sharing, Jose. I appreciate that, my brother. Awesome yeah, story. A lot so, of stuff that I didn't, I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll kind of take it back as far as Jose did. And um, I, on the other hand, the, the similarity, um, I myself was also working pretty young maybe not for the same reasons you know that jose was but i was in the industry in the construction industry ever since i was 14. i had a um uh, my cousin used to do framing he used to run the crew so i would go help him out on the weekends or you know summer breaks or, or winter breaks or whatever and that's kind of how i got into the industry but like jose i think i hit a wall to where i kind of just woke up one day and i you know i said this isn't for me you know just you know working my butt off all the you know all day in the sun and the heat it's just not something that I want to do forever. So um, what I did is I, I got into the roofing industry through an um, uncle of mine, and he helped me out. He actually helped me start my own crews. And that's kind of what I did for about eight years um, until I ran into this guy at the same company that he just mentioned. Um, we kind of talked about starting something on our own, you know, a couple of times and talked about meeting up and stuff, but just never, you know, just never was happening. Um, so one day, just out of nowhere, we just both had the time and we ended up meeting and, as he said, the rest is history. Now we're sitting here in front of you guys. <laughs> you <wasn't laughs> so one, you know, one thing that always set out, you know, I, I had an opportunity to work with you guys on the websites and the branding stuff, and to really get to know who you guys are as a company. One of the things that really stood out to me was your, you guys' company culture. Uh, why has that been so important, you guys, and what is your company culture all about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, company culture is, you know, culture is king. That's what Randy says, man. I never believed him in the beginning, right? When you first start a company, when they tell you, like, you know, create some values, you know, and all, all things like that, you don't, like, what is values going to really, money, values isn't going to make me money. Values isn't going to really bring me to where I want to be. And I guess you hit a certain point where you realize how important your values really, really are, right? So when we went to the conference with Randy in the beginning of the year, we kind of followed his his values, right? We kind of followed his model just to kind of get going and along the way i actually called you nick right i was super excited right i could i i finally i finally figured out the new era brand right and um i we came up with some new values and the values have made up our culture man right we every guy coming into to the company has to resonate with some of those values and you know our go ahead <laughs> so um yeah man as he was saying you know the values is what makes it and um our, our culture is just so important to us on every level. Well, obviously, on a, on a business level, when we see these guys and do business with them, you know, work with them at the office all day, every day. But not just that; it also becomes, you know, a personal culture to where we're, you know, we're not just um, team members with these, you know, with our guys. We're friends, and you know, we know their families, and our kids know each other. And when we try to, you know, when we do activities together, it's not just you know us and spouses. It's we we try to get the kids involved and and just create a culture, not just in the office but outside of the office and. I think it's something really important to me has always been waking up and wanting to do what I have to do that day. And we want to create that culture for the people that, you know, come in and, and do that for us. I completely agree. What about you, Randy? What's your thoughts on company culture? Because that's something that I know you've been pushing for a while. Yeah, man. And I mean, they, they nailed it. It's it, it starts with values. And, and, you know, that's something that I didn't know right away. You know, I, I always feel like I was raised with good values and those sort of things, but I didn't really 
take the time to say these are our set values that we're going to build the entire culture and the entire framework of our business around once we did that that start, everything else started falling into place people left people came like things happened but ultimately once we took those values and and and, and the idea is that values is a set of guidelines to help you make decisions Mm -hmm. right. So when, when, and then also as you grow your business, you can't be the one making all the decisions. So you, so you want to have that, 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 that framework in place. That way, once you start hiring managers, once you start hiring people and, 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 and extending that, that the opportunity for other people to make decisions on behalf of your company, that that's makes it even that much stronger and that much more important to have those values in place. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and mm -hmm. I, I think just ultimately, you know, my, my rules of hiring, like focus on character, not experience, you know, hire people that have the right character that, that, you know, once you've established the values, once you've established the culture that you want to have within your business, focus on hiring people that fit within that culture, instead of just taking the easy road and hiring anybody that's willing to come work with you, anybody that has a pulse, anybody, you know, we want to, as entrepreneurs, we tend to want to kind of take the, take the, the, the high take the easy road press the easy button cool my brother wants to come work for me okay cool my sister whatever my family like they just want sure they'll come work for me cool here's a job with no with and that's it right so we have to learn to try to put the right people in the right positions and and all the while like hire people to to fit the culture versus trying to manipulate a culture after you've already hired the people if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and, and i think doing things you know, the, the family culture, right? That's big with both of our companies. We're real big on family. Like when we do company events, it's not a black tie. Only the only the employees and their spouse can come and go to some yuppie, like Ritzy, Ritz Carlton and, and pretend we're like something we're not. No, we go right. to like fun zones, bring the kids and like bowling alleys and let all the kids come and have fun and go parks and do those sort of things. I feel like really build that culture when you include your team and their families as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what really helps solidify that family culture and doing mm -hmm. these events outside of the office on a regular basis, invest. Yeah. Spend some money, get a food truck, go to a park, rent some jumping equipment, those big bouncy houses, do whatever you got to do to, to get your company's families connected with one another. Mm -hmm. And you will see a major growth in your company culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's, that's huge for us. Now. So first off, also one thing I want to mention too before we get too far. How how old are you guys? I'm thirty. Thirty. Oh, I'm a young. I'm the young. I'm the young one. Twenty five years old. Thirty and twenty five. So these are yeah. the young guns doing it over here. So we're the, we're the youngest roofing company out there, killing it. So you guys, you know, you guys are still newer. You guys are making it happen. You guys reinvested in your company, right? You guys got the new website. And then after that, you guys redid your core values, got a new logo and stuff like that. Got a new slogan. Why did you decide to, you know? invest into those things to improve things that technically you already had right you already had all that stuff you had the logo you had the website why did you decide to to reinvest in your company and, and kind of rebrand your company yeah so i'm really big on role models huge 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 right I, I like to follow people that have already made it and one of the you know obviously one of the biggest role models is elite for me and um mm -hmm. so when we first started you guys if i could show you the first logo that we started right it was, it's it's really funny but um, we've actually designed <laughs> our logo three or four different times because the companies that are doing it, man, it's just very simple, right? Very simple, mm -hmm. very professional. It catches your eye. And that's not what we had. We were kind of all over the place, right? We had five, six different colors. We had, we were wearing different types of polo shirts. Like we, I mean, like polo colors, like we were all over the place. And what I really noticed about Elite is they have their brown down, right? They have the colors, they have a logo, they have a slogan and they stick to it no matter what. And that's what really hit it for us, right? I was actually watching a Steve Jobs documentary and man, that's when it kind of lit for me, man. Like the way that he talked about iPhone is the way that I wanted others to talk about New Era Roofing, right? How do I make roofing look sexy? Like that was my thing. And the way that I do it is I modernize it, right? I clean it up and I energize it, right? Make it look energized. And that's when I started talking to you, Nick. And Thankfully, this, since the day I've met you, Nick, man, you've transformed New Era into what it is today. I really appreciate that, man. That means a that's, lot. Thank you so much. I got the most confusing call from Jose about making you sexy, and I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I, I may or may not have said that one time and my staff has never let it down. They're like, <laughs> yeah, somehow I was like, I was like we're going to make roofing sexy again or something. And they wrote it on the floor. They mentioned this like, I've never lived it down. Yeah, yeah. I will never forget that. And I was driving down the road and I get a call from Crazy Jose going off on a rant about making roofing sexy. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, bro. So, <laughs> so I'm a huge visionary, man. Like every time I get a, a something like that I think can take to the next level, Hugo's getting those calls and, you know, I won't let Hugo off the phone until he listens to what I have to say. <laughs> uh, listening to me, he's going to hear me at the office next the next day. And you, Nick, you were actually getting those calls for a while too, man. That was, that was, that was. I mean, that sounds like Nick running. calling yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, so let me let me let's go back a little bit. We're talking about a lot of cool things, right? This is a lot of fun, but this this crap's not easy either. Like, what were some of the? How long have you guys been in business now? And what were some of the struggles and some of the cha big biggest challenges that you guys faced early on? You want to start that one? I think you know. Okay, so definitely some of the biggest struggles was um, when we first started was our systems. I guess I want to start with our systems. Our systems were all over the place, man. We started with basically papers in a folder, right? That's how our projects were. So we had a huge desk with a bunch of job files all over the place, right? We had hit our first year, we had hit, you know, it was just me by myself. So I hit it around 200,000. The next year I started, that's when I met Hugo and we hit our 750. Um, but the reason for that 750 was because we finally started to systemize it. Instead of kind of, you know, me running the projects all by myself, we started kind of bringing people in. And them starting to just like kind of giving every assigning everybody roles right so we went from being paper on um, everything on paper over to everything on a job job nimbus right job nimbus has really really have done it for us um before at, when we were at three hundred thousand, i remember we had three hundred thousand last year man the office was chaos right there was paper flying everywhere no one knew where we were at the numbers were all messed up since we've got job nimbus 300,000 this year seemed kind of a piece of cake to us, right? We were actually bored and we were ready to move on to the next yeah. level. So if I were to say start somewhere, it's start with the CRM for sure. And I'll mm. jump with, I think for me on a, on a more personal level, the a big challenge was my just my mentality in the sense that I, I've been in roofing for almost 10 years now, but I've always been a sub. I've been, you know, running the crews and I've ran up to three crews and I know how to do that and I can kill it in that, but actually systemizing something and, and, and you know um using a computer more i mean i've always used the computer but i've always used paper and just kind of changing my mentality from the subcontractor that would write out invoices to you know five or six different companies that i was doing work for and then print them out and keep them in a three-ring binder to having everything on a crm and and you know just put it put in a job number and, and finding things i think that was a big challenge for me personally just on a mental level just to to switch that from from who i was for the last nine years of my life to to kind of now become, you know, what new areas today. Mm -hmm. that, that's interesting you bring that up because that I think I I'd venture to say that's one of the biggest challenges for a lot of companies yeah. because they're implementing a new CRM, they're implementing process, they're really trying to streamline things, but getting the people that have already known this business that have done it a certain way to get them to to understand and embrace and make that change is, is difficult. One. People just don't like change. Human nature, we're not we're not big on change. And, right. and if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? My file system works just fine. I've been <laughs> doing this for 20 years. Why do I have to change and add the CRM system, you know? Um, so that's a big challenge. But uh, what what do you think for you, like, that kind of got you over the hump and hel helped you finally embrace, like, all right, I got to make this change in order to get to the next level? I, I think a lot of that is, um, to be completely honest, has to do with the, the relationship that me and Jose were able to build from the beginning. I um honestly am really thankful for you know, what that I we kind of found each other because I feel like we're complete opposites in that sense. He's just you, you know he gets off the phone with one of you guys and he's just lit and he wants to do something <laughs> or buy something new and I always have to like kind of pull him back and say whoa, whoa, whoa slow down like you know. But I think we've been a very good medium to where we have you know yeah we've taken some losses here and there but I think to answer your question that that what has pushed me the most has been you know the relationship. Um, on, a, on a business level and on a personal level that I have with him that we kind of were able to meet to so where I'm more conservative. I was I was subbing for nine years. I'm more like, well, I don't want to take that risk. And he's more, mm -hmm. well, like, let me jump off the cliff and find out what happens halfway. <laughs> I love that because my, uh, 
my partner, he's actually watching. I think, what's up, Cody? How you doing, man? Appreciate you, brother. Uh, same type of thing. You know, I'm like the jump off a bridge and, and build my wings on the way down. And he's yeah. more like conservative, like, hey, let, let's like think about this and process this and actually make a good decision here. So, you know, I think we can we can dive into that because I think, you know, partnership is very strong to be able to scale and grow a business. Um, if not partnership, but you've got to have another person that balances out your weaknesses. Not right. one person, you know, God didn't make any one of us the 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 perfect symmetry to be able to execute on all levels to build right. a great company, and no matter what space you're in. So whether you you have a partner or you don't have a partner, it's imperative that you surround yourself with people that are good at the things you're not, and, and that can kind of balance you out all the while fitting within that culture, you know. So under and, and you guys have come a long way because you understand that dynamic of you know I'm I'm this way, you're this way, we're different, but we come together and we execute and we make things happen. And we've been able to put you guys in roles and help develop and you've developed the roles where where it's really where, where it's really a, a, accentuating your strengths and, and kind of putting you in your strength zone. Yeah, man. No, definitely one of the things too that helped us kind of move up is like seeking for knowledge, right? Learning from like basically going to your conference this year, right? Last year, man, we didn't have it together. I can tell you that for sure. Our systems weren't in place. Our sales weren't in place. And once we went to your guys' conference, man, it changed everything for us. We're not the type, you know, last year we were the type we would learn something and kind of, kind of stick with it, not really try to execute it. And now, right, we learn something, we execute it and we train it, all right? We teach it. And that's what we do every time that you teach us something, man. Like right away, we, you know, we're learning, but we're also executing. Though we're not just sitting on it, and that has really, really helped us grow this year. Um, because like most people, you know, knowledge. What is? It, what? How do they say it? They say execution trumps knowledge every day. Most people sit on the knowledge. You know, I think it's just executing, right? Just do it. And that has really helped us grow this year. That's mm. awesome. Yeah, you guys, you, you, you guys have. It's been a lot of fun to be a part of it, to, to be able to just watch you execute and how you light up when you call me like, hey, we did this and it worked. I'm like, yes, cool. You know, it's a lot of fun. Man. Uh, so yeah. speaking of, we, we didn't even really have to do a promotion, man, because you guys did a fantastic job uh, on, you know, unscripted, you know, but uh, this show wouldn't be wouldn't be possible. I mean, there's production. There's a lot that goes into it, 112 episodes, you know, so we want to give a big shout out to Job Nimbus, who does work with you, works with me. And, uh, you know, he already did enough promotion there. But if you are interested in checking out a great CRM, you know, updating your CRM, looking to make a change this year, looking to upgrade or just add a CRM, uh, Job Nimbus is, is the the number one, the pioneer and in, in, in customizable roofing CRM platform. So I would definitely check that out. Uh, and then, you know, we, we have another sponsor as well there, Nick, if you want to do the read for them. Mm -hmm. For one click code, right, Randy? So, I mean, Randy, when you were an insurance adjuster, what were you doing to, to figure out roofing codes, man? <laughs> just looking it up man doing the legwork trying to figure it out Look, looking up every city you have to either go to the website or call the city or whatever to figure out what the code is and uh and and i think most contractors across the country had to do that or st are still doing that that are unaware of one click code mm -hmm. so one click code.com right get accurate roofing codes from any mobile or desktop advice make sure you guys are checking them out well, we thank you guys so much for the sponsors. Now, you know, Randy, one thing I want to talk about too, we talk about company culture, right? We talk about brand development and what all the work that you guys are, these guys are putting in to reinvest in their company. One thing you've always been a big believer in too, before you really take this thing to the next level is truly understanding your why. What does that really mean, Randy? Why is that so important and something that people don't think about in business? Well, it's, it's so easy to get caught up in, in what you do. And, you know, we, we do roofing. Why, you know, what, how, how do you do it? You, you implement X, Y, Z process. You, you install roofs, you open the, open the shingles, you nail them on a certain way. You read the directions. Like why, what and how are so common in all businesses. That's like a commonplace in all businesses. But like when it, when you really dig deep and understand why you started your business, why your business exists, and and to think like a bigger picture of, uh, uh, above and beyond, you know, just the, I have a business to support my family, to make money, blah, blah, blah. We all have that, that's great. But it, but to, to, to really solidify those values and solidify that culture, you know, you, you gotta dig real deep and understand what really motivates you <clears throat> on an intrinsic level 
and 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 that's how kind of help you identify your why as to why do I exist? Why do I want to do this? Why do I want to be a leader? Why do I want to grow a business? Why do I wake up every single day and look in the mirror and go to work and work hard? If you can figure that out and and, and intertwine that within your company culture, it really takes you to a completely new level. And and I really got exposed to this by reading uh, a book by Simon Sinek called uh, you know, it's called What Your Why, like how great leaders. Uh, inspire others and and it's um it, for a great read i would definitely check that out what what's your why by simon sinek mm -hmm. so what for you guys i know that's been something that's been very important from the beginning yeah so i think we are our, our uh, why kind of lines up and we've known this for a while when we hear the word free and freedom kind of like lights us up right we've always known that we're kind of chasing freedom right freedom of time and financial freedom and I think that we were able to find it with uh, in the roofing industry that we're going to be able to obtain that sooner or later, but not only obtain it for ourselves, teach it to others on how to, you know, how to teach them freedom, right? Execute freedom and for them to teach others how to get freedom. And I think that you can elaborate a little bit of, you know, a little bit more about our why. So, yeah, just kind of elaborate more on that. I think from the get go, from when we met and, you know, even got to know each other on a personal level before we talked business, we kind of figured out really quick that, as he said, freedom was big for, for both of us. That's something that, even like I said earlier, I've been, you know, subbing for the last nine years before this. And um, that, that was, even though I didn't really do anything to obtain it, that was my big thing. I wanted to, you know, have the time to do what I wanted when I wanted and, and have what I want and stuff like that. Not necessarily put in a price tag or, or you know, or a certain car or a certain house behind it, just simply what, what I feel like doing and want to do. Um, and because we were both on the same level, that's kind of our personal wise. And then it came together and the where it was why as a company is to not just obtain that for ourselves, but to help other people that are motivated and that are, you know, that want it just as bad as we do to get there. So mm -hmm. um, you know, on a personal level, that's our why, but on a company level as New Era, New Era, we want to create a flat platform for somebody to come in for, with a great culture, as we already spoke about, that they're happy, that they're, you know, they want to come into the office and they want to come and create this freedom for themselves, for their family. And not just that, but encourage them and teach them to create, to teach other people to do it. And, you know, at the end of the day, entrepreneurship to me has always been huge. And the more people that I can influence to, to take that, you know, step in that direction is a win. And, sure. and, and it's our why at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's another reason why I really love our industry, because as a roofing company, you you can collaborate with your own business, with other businesses and really. And that's the premise of this show. We started this show to share the entrepreneurial journey, to to encourage and to teach entrepreneurship. And our business models in a, in a lot of ways help that. You know, Correct. we can help develop sub crews, sub salespeople, and even our staff. Like if they're part of a, a fast growing, you know, exciting culture, you know, we, don't don't discredit entrepreneurship. I mean, some people, they're just not wired to take a risk and to and to take control of of, of wanting to, you know, wake up and be be in charge and where the where the weight of having to uh take care of and, and make decisions that that help uh, that in that affect a whole bunch of other people and their families but they may have really good ideas and they want to be a part of something you know bigger than themselves so you want to you know use your platform as a business owner to encourage entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship and, and if you could surround yourself with people that that are good ideas free thinkers that all have a you know an understanding of the why and motivated man it's it's so cool to see what ends up happening with your business mm -hmm. right yes now now randy you've worked with you know a, a good amount of different roofing contractors roofing companies throughout the country um you know we're looking at you know organizations that are just getting started and really starting to scale now and, and start to flourish what are some of the things that you've seen in New Era that are like, hey, these are some of the things that other contractors need to make sure they're doing, they're getting going to, to find success? Well, first off, man, these guys are just they're they're they're, they're, they're th the three things we get from Patrick Lencioni. I, st I study a lot of him and, and the ideal team player, but but the three key elements that that I think you need when you're hiring people, but also to be super successful in life is hungry. They're both very hungry, humble humble they listen they they're, they're willing to execute they're willing to learn they're willing to, to take advice and, and smart you know they're sharp they're people smart it isn't just oh my god i have a great education no it's just about being people smart 
They understand people, they value people, they empathize with, with wanting to help others. And those three things combined are just kind of a framework that's really, you know, help them execute and really help them really, you know, take advantage of all the opportunities that that's, they've, that's been put, put forth, you know, not to pump up the academy too much, but that's what we built. We built the program to have a step-by-step -step system for you to follow and implement one step at a time to build out your business and build the inf infrastructure of your business. And these guys just execute at a, at a level that that is unheard of in most for most companies. You know, maybe they're just naive and young and hungry and don't even know what they're doing, but they just <laughs> execute. And all of a sudden they're seeing a ton of results. So it's been it's been fun. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, one thing I wanted to talk to you about uh, to you guys about was was building key relationships and something that we mentioned when we were kind of discussing today's episode and everything like that. What have you guys been doing? Who have you guys been trying to connect with in terms of key relationships that's going to help you grow the company long term? Well, definitely inside the business, um, you know, our key relationships that have built have built us this year is definitely Randy on the on the business side, right? Nick, you've helped us on all the media side. Um, Debbie has helped us on right on our life financials. Um, Aaron Trujillo, he's he's amazing, man. He's had he has actually systemized all of our job nimbus. So where I'm getting at with this is that you need key partners that already know what they're doing, right? You need to you need to network with people that already know what they're doing. Without the help of you guys, New Era would not be thriving the way that it is. And I can guarantee that, right? We were very, like I mentioned, we were very lost last year. So with the help of all these key people, yes, it has helped us really obtain what we need to do and hit, you know, bigger goals every year. Right now we are, we already know our goals and our systems and everything ready for next year, right? Last year, I wouldn't have been able to say that, right? I was completely lost. I didn't know what to do for next year. Now, because that, because of the help of key, you know, key relationships, it has helped us kind of give us, um, basically systemize our, our business for success. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that, man. We definitely, we definitely appreciate it. It's been, it's been fun being part of the journey. There's no doubt about it. So, man, I got some kind of fun, right? This is a show about entrepreneurship. Yeah. And as many of you guys know, you know, I'm an entrepreneur before of anything else. I've never claimed to be a manager or anything. I'm an entrepreneur. I love business. I've been starting businesses since I was a little kid. And there's always been, you know, always some sort of you know, shiny object uh, that I play with. You know, I got software. I got a couple other little plant things going on. And these guys got a little side hustle that we talked about, <laughs> yeah, that's talked right. about earlier. And I want to talk about that because it's pretty dang cool that you guys just got, where did that idea come? And walk us through that. What you got going on? Yeah, man. So our, my cousin. Went, yeah. It was another one of those, those, um, Crazy Jose moments, where I walked into the office, <laughs> down like a nine Jose day, moment. With this new idea. I, I believe we're <laughs> that his cousin and has purchased uh, one of these uh, side by sides of razors, and um, he, I, I believe, it was more for for fun, but he also wanted to help, you know, help the cost of paying it back or paying it off or whatever it may be. And he started renting it and started having success with it. Um, and you know, they've always talked about you know doing something else. We want to you know get into real estate market and. And you know, never let go of New Era, but you know, start start as Randy said, we, entrepreneurship. we're entrepreneurs also, and we want to keep doing other things. So we thought, hey, why not try this out? Um, I kind of, once again, we go back to like our, our personalities. I kind of was like, well, that's a good idea. We'll look into it later. Well, that afternoon, I got a call that he had already scoped some <laughs> them out, and we were ready to he purchase up with the new one. Huh? Didn't yes, you? we were ready to purchase as soon as I was. So, you know, like I said earlier that I think that has really helped us in business. Um, I kind of said, okay, we'll check it out later. He was ready to go. So the next thing I knew we were hauling two razors down the how, 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 sorry, down the highway with, you know, he, he had one with his truck and one with my truck. And um, that same weekend we rented him out. I believe where we came to, to, to park him, some guy asked us about him and he was, he was our first customer. <laughs> how cool is that? I love that. Bunch of yeah, entrepreneurs, I, man. You guys I, I, are hustlers. Yeah, I think I booked it for you know, next month or something. I'm almost <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's called Revved Up Power Sport Rentals. All right, website. Check Go check it out. We'll, we'll throw the we'll throw the link in the in the notes over here. All right, perfect. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Who'd have thought we're on a roofing show and we're gonna book some side by sides? <laughs> yeah. and, and this is the idea I got because because we always try to do the culture events for our sales team and office mm -hmm. staff and whatever else. So it just dawned on me when we were talking. I was like, well, my, I might as well rent the two and 
and uh you know go up to the mountains and we're going to be doing like a little you know fall you know you know brotherhood type of thing with mm -hmm. our sales team here in the next couple months so i'm like hey that's a great idea let's just rent a couple side buys you know and, yeah. and it's cool because you know i went to moab like last year or whatever we rent they were expensive i mean we rented them for just like one day and pretty much you could rent it for the whole weekend for the same price that you rent the thing for like one day like at one of those commercialized locations yeah. so it's kind of cool yeah man yeah, you, we, you rented one randy you rented oh one? yeah we rented some can ams and they were ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> no yeah man and just being the people that we are we are kind of already did that randy we um like what was it two weeks ago yeah we actually re left early uh, on a Friday. We, we went over to his house. He cooked up some meat, and we pulled out the razors for all the guys to ride, and including our off everyone. Actually, everybody on the team went, and he had some trails by by his house, and it was a good time, man. It's good. It's fun to enjoy those things with you know with your team. Absolutely. Not so cool. So so let's reel this thing back in here. And so, how many guys do you have now? Where did you? Where were you at last year? And how many guys do you have now? What kind of targets are you shooting for this year? So last year was me, Hugo, and I, and one guy, no, two guys, right? Yeah. Two guys. And um, those were friend of ours. Like, you know, you start, you always start with your friends. Um, fortunately, those, those guys are not with us anymore. So now we're three, we're three, what is it? One, two, we're four, seven. We're seven total right now. We got four sales guys, uh, Hugo and I, and an office yes. manager. Okay. Right. Um, and our goal is to hit, Two more sales guys, and now we're actually Rachel's on there. We're actually going to start working with Rachel at SFY. So a little mm -hmm. bit, more, we're adding more things to make it easier for the sales guys. Um, that way, they're they're kind of just ready to sell, right? And and there's, what, that was your question. Yeah, yeah. And then what's the goal? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what are you guys on pace for to be able to try to end out this year? And again, this is in a COVID year mm -hmm. and in a year with no no we're in the yeah. never market, no fresh yeah. hailstorms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we went from 250 to 750. Our goal this year was to hit 2 million, right? That was mm -hmm. our goal. We're not going to hit the 2 million, but we're going to be really, really close to it. I think we're going to be just shy of like we're going to be seven, around 1750. And then our goal next year is to be over 2 million, right? We're always shooting really high to miss low. That's always been our thing, right? We, we, we aim high to miss low. And I think next year we're gonna, what is it called, three? Three? three. Yeah, three, next year's three million. And after that's four, we just bump it up yep. to a million each year. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about more like strategy there, like to be really precise. Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I always talk like, you know, if you aim for the stars, you might just hit the moon, right? Yeah. So, so that's a good philosophy to have, man. More than doubling your business in a down year where companies are out there like w wondering whether they're even gonna be in business in the winter time. And you guys are still executing, still thriving in a down market. And uh, I'm proud of you guys. You've, you've executed well. And I, I guarantee there's a lot of great comments on here. And I guarantee for those of you who are listening to this podcast, who are watching this, and uh, you, there, there's a lot of people out there to, that can relate to where you are. They're getting their business going and trying to make it to the next level. And I really appreciate you guys coming on, sharing your story. And, uh, man, you got me motivated. And I think, you, I, I, think I speak for a lot of the viewers that uh, – they really kind of got a lot of us uh, motivated through your story. And we appreciate you guys jumping on. Now, mm -hmm. now I'm going to let Nick put you on the spot here. Mm -hmm. Well, the golden nugget, we always end it with the golden nugget, right? That that one thing that you want to leave all the viewers with, where it could be something to implement their business, some, you know, crazy thing that you did. They're like, hey, you need to do this or fix this. It's going to make a big impact. But now I always start with Randy. I make Randy go first. So that mm -hmm. gives you, you know, he's probably going to talk for 10 minutes. So you got you got a while to think of it. <laughs> no, what you got, Randy? All right. So I, I have a hard time on this one. I really try to you know, not, I'm not trying to be salesy or anything like this and not to talk about myself as a coach, but in general, in business and in life, man, lean, like, like you, like, like Jose said earlier, and I've had the same philosophy is, you know, I don't want to be the smartest, most successful person in the room. If I am, I'm in the wrong room. Correct. So lean on others, find mentors, find people who, who've been there, done that, who, who have, who have accomplished what you want to accomplish and surround yourself by good people that, that you can learn from and grow from, find mentors, find a business coach, find somebody that you can lean on to learn from, to help, you know? So I, I think I, I contribute a huge amount of my success to the coaches I have now and the coaches and the mentors that I've had throughout my whole career. So, you know, you don't have to know everything. It's okay. Learn from others, be humble, be hungry and be smart.
Mm-hmm. Thanks, Randy. I like it. What about you guys? We got two gold nuggets in over here. What we got, boys? Um, I think mine's more internally. It's something that I actually still I'm still struggle with at times. Right. One of the biggest things to failure, I think, is comparison, comparing yourself to other companies that are already up there. That was my thing, man. Like for for the longest time, he's actually helped me a lot with this. Is you know, if another company was doing this X amount of sales, like why aren't we doing that? Right. You know, and that would get me all riled up and kind of put me down and Right. And if somebody else has a better website or something like that, I was always kind of competing against other roofing companies for no apparent reason. Right. But that was killing me. Right. That was, you know, I was not happy with myself. I was not happy with the business. And where it switched for me is I started kind of competing against myself. Right. And the company. And that's when we really started growing, man, because now I'm not competing against what somebody else is doing, where they've had X amount of years of experience and, you know, they're already doing amazing things because of how long they've been in business. Now I'm, I'm, I'm competing against what we did last year. Right. You know, and I, and I'm focusing more on what the guys, you know, com- letting the guys compete against themselves. Now that has really helped us grow because now, you know, we're not paying attention to anybody else. We're kind of paying attention to ourselves and we're growing. We really are growing because of that. So I don't anybody starting off to not compare yourself against with other, with other people already in the business. That's that's a huge one. Um, I, I think I, I to add to that uh, the two things. One that's huge is innovation, and that's actually one of our one of our core values. Um, and it kind of ties into what Randy said: is um, you know find find people that did it and 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 see how they did it, and and then you know follow that follow their footsteps. Um, but um, innovation, I think, is key, and I think it's it's something that has really helped us um, get to where we are, and and will help us get to where we want to get. Um, so that's, that's the first one. And then secondly, just going back to, um, being, you know, in the business already for nine years and just doing the sub work, I think it in simple, in simple words, I'm just going to say, just do it, you know, like mm-hmm. don't have that thought forever and think, well, once I have this much saved up or once this happens or the next hailstorm, whatever it may be, just do it. I mean, it, there's never a better time than right now. So just pull the trigger. And, and once again, I'll, I'll recap on, I feel like that's where, um, you know, we, we compliment each other perfectly because he just wants to pull the trigger and I don't, but I, I mean, just do it. If you're thinking about it, just do it. Mm-hmm. Ready, ready, fire, aim. Correct. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I love it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a special episode to have you guys on for sure for episode 112 of the Start Bill Grow Show. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Take care and God bless. Thanks, guys.